guys, finally sleeps here. We've been talking about what's coming next after Team of the Season ends. Uh, we've been knocking around a few ideas with End of an Air coming up, um, International Cups like the Africa Cup of Nations, and Treasure Hunt, which was the most popular. It's confirmed, it's out today. Treasure Hunt is here with a twist. Instead of the rehashed pirate theme that we've seen the last couple of seasons, it's now archaeological with glyphs and artifacts and stuff. So it's out with Jack Sparrow and in with Indiana Jones. Before we break the event down though, make sure you like, subscribe, share, and comment. You can even join at YouTube for a few exciting perks or visit finallysleeps.com where I post all of my exclusive members only stuff along with public info for everyone to enjoy. Special thanks go out to a couple of longtime members, Johnny503 and Damien. I appreciate your support, guys. All right, then. Grab your whip, slap on your hat, and let's head out to the desert. Treasure Hunt is here. A side note. I grew up on George Lucas and Steven Spielberg, so Indiana Jones and Star Wars. This is going to be so much more fun than the Pirates. Not that I don't like the treasure map and those old events, you know, with the stupid shark crap, but Treasure Hunt's always been one of my favorite events in the past, especially when it was a grinding event the last two years, but EA has promised the chance of grinding for this event as well. So some of us have been watching ad after ad after ad to get prepared. Some more than others, not mentioning any names, <coughs> Liam, <coughs> John. If you were able to put back a few hundred stamina, all the better. Or 600 to 800, like a couple of the guys in my league, you're, you're going to be set. Let's break down this two-week event and see what's achievable. The main chapter is the Sahara. This is where the grinding comes into play. You have two separate sets of events, along with videos that reset daily. Uh, the top three include a skill game, a match, and a versus attack. This is the grinding aspect and, aspect and where the stamina comes into play. You can repeat each of these three nodes as many times as you want, but the stamina required to play them increases on each new turn, and it caps out at 10. This is separate for each of the three. So, first time you play any of them, it costs two stamina. Then the second time it's four, third is six, four is, fourth time through it's eight, the fifth time is 10 stamina, and that's the same for every time thereafter until the next reset. And when it starts back over at 2. To get the best bang for your stamina, you need to play each of the three events at least four times. Those 12 plays will cost you a total of 60 stamina. Your 13th turn, no matter which node you choose, is going to cost 10 thereafter. So, hope that kind of makes sense. The versus match does require a max 100 overall team with no players below 80 in your squad. This is something you should be used to at this point is because what we've seen with the max OVR coming into play in the last several events. Chemistry is important here as well, obviously. Notice that it says guaranteed rewards. This is only if you win though. It's not guaranteed if you just play. I tested this just to see and if you lose. It, you get nothing. I mean, my mind was racing with autoplay heaven if you got that no matter what. But it doesn't work that way. Um, there is an advantage to playing the versus match compared to the other two because it does spit out 1,000 XP instead of 1,500 coins. But again, you have to win. The top row events gives you treasure hunt resources, which is exploration tickets for the bottom row of events, uh, journal pages for the treasure map page, hidden artifacts for the hidden artifacts, reward tab, or the sought after bizarre coin, which we'll talk about in a minute. The exploration tickets are used to engage in the bottom row of matches. These are three different matches, each with a different difficulty level, cost, and reward possibility. The first match is versus a 90 rated team. It costs 20 tickets to play and gives up five hidden artifacts. Completing that first match then unlocks match number two, which is a little bit tougher, costs 30 tickets to play against a 100 OVR team, and gives up 10 hidden artifacts. If you are brave enough to tackle match three, it's against a 120 OVR team, but you start at the half down by two. 
The cost is also 30 tickets, but it gives up 20 hidden artifacts and a glyph fragment upon a win. Now, the glyph fragments are what you use to earn a 99 rated prime icon right mid. 800 glyph fragments required because 200 turn into one glyph. Moving on. Based on the numbers, if you can easily win the 100 OVR team, it's the best bang for your exploration tickets. Spending 120 exploration tickets gets you 40 artifacts as compared to 30 artifacts by playing the ultra easy uh, first match for the same amount of tickets. If you are a next level player and are able to take on that extreme third match with the win at least half of the time, then obviously go that route. Even if you play your matches and lose all four, you still get 24 artifacts. Odds are that they'll be adding an exchange option for the glyphs before the event is over. I'm assuming you'll be able to turn them in for XP, coins, and boosts before it's all overseeing how earning the necessary allotment for that prime icon is out of reach for 99.9% .9 of us. The artifacts you earn from the matches are used to make your way along the reward path into the hidden artifact tab. There are a ton of amazing awards in here if you like ranking up and boost. If you buy the pass, even more by the way of boost and ranking up in that top row. Now, I like to keep this game free to play, but I will be bowing down to EA on this occasion and unlocking the pass. It's just too hard to pass up on all that boost for $10 US. The treasure map tab is where you put your journal pages to work. This is where you open treasure chests in the hope of finding buried treasure. For each chest you open, it's going to cost you 10 journal pages. Not all chests spit out a reward either. Um, I mean, they do spit out something, but it's nothing to worry about. Just some XP and uh, some coins. Speaking of rewards, you can earn Master Player's Glyphs, Prime Icons, Boost, Coins, and, like I said, XP in these chests if you're lucky enough to open up with some real treasure. There's also a 40 hidden artifact option that pops up every once in a while. This early into the event, I have no clue on the frequency of glyphs, but based on the rewards, it looks more like an Easter egg on a daily occurrence than it does anything else. This is where the big rewards uh, look like they'll be found, is on this, this part of the map. I've already scored two master players thanks to the 7500 gems I threw down for the bundle. Uh, it looks like they do pop out at a pretty high frequency, which means their cost in the market is going to be near nothing this early into the game. They may be an investment opportunity because after this is over and they go extinct, they may pop back up. So pay attention to those players, hold on to the ones you get because they're not going for anything right now. The last thing I want to discuss is the bizarre coin. This magical token appears randomly among the Sahara chapter events. If you find one, it opens up the bazaar for one hour where you can purchase special, special skill boost offers in exchange for gems. I had one pop up right away in the game, which either means I got really lucky or you can expect these things to pop up about once an hour if you're playing. I really don't know this early into the event. Treasure hunt in a nutshell. Uh, it looks like it's all about stamina and relentlessly grinding the event much like the UCL Weekend Tournament. Spend the money to unlock the top tier in the Hidden Artifact tab if you want the best rewards including all those rank up tokens and the uh, boost that's coming out. There's a lot of ranking up tokens up there that's going to be worth it. Best rewards, uh, make sure you have a 100 max OVR team for the versus matches and you do play them all as well. Now as far as what we can get in this game free to play, uh, take away the top tier in, where you get all the boost, but if you just free to play on this and you spend some gems on maybe some journal pages, everything's possible in that aspect of this event. It doesn't look like there's anything that's out of reach other than the prime icon. It's more about putting in the time and grinding this out. Um, all of the players, other than that prime icon, are achievable throughout the event, which means nobody is going to be worth any more coins to anybody else. It's just going to come down to whether or not you grinded enough and earned them when you opened a treasure chest. So, again, one of my favorite events, only because it's a grinding event. Think of it more like versus. You're just, it's a random, what kind of uh, treasure you're going to open, but you have to put in the work. 
It's a two-week event. Make sure you put in the time, get as many rewards as you possibly can, and this will definitely be worth it in the long run. Hold on to your players, too. Don't sell them yet. All right, that's it for now. Enjoy. Uh, I'm off to go watch Raiders of the Lost Ark just to get myself in the mood. And make sure you check out uh, FinallySleeps.com. And like, subscribe, share, and comment. Anybody in the U.S., happy 4th of July. As long as you keep watching, I'll keep making videos. Thanks for watching. Maybe check out one of these other videos next. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share. Visit my site, finallyhesleeps.com, for daily posts about FIFA Mobile and other various brain vomit. Plus, if you get really bored, you can find merchandise and my latest comedy album, Life Before the Internet, at the links below. Like, down at the bottom, those links. Thank you.